<laughs> I, I still don't think he does. In 2008, King published both a novel, Duma Key, and a collection just after sunset. The latter featured 13 short stories, including a previously unpublished novella in starting July 28th, 2008, and was released as a serialized animated series to lead up to the release of Just After Sunset. In 2009, King published You Are, a novel written exclusively for the launch of the second generation Amazon Kindle and available only on Amazon.com and Throttle, a novella co-written with his son Joe Hill and released later as an audiobook titled Road Rage, that's a good one, which included Richard Matheson's short story Duel. King's novel Under the Dome was published on November 10th, of that year. It is reworking of an unfinished novel he tried writing twice in the late 1970s and early 1980s. And at 1,074 pages, it is the largest novel he has written since it. Under the Dome debuted at number one in the New York Times bestseller list. I haven't read that, but I really want Neither. to. I really, really want to. There's a, it was a TV series. Didn't they do yep. a TV series? <clears throat> they did two, actually. One was called Haven. No, that was based off of Colorado Kid. Well, it was also kind of based off of that. Uh, as far as I know, it's based off of Colorado Kid, too. Okay. The initial story is based off of it, but it's also got some stuff from Under the Dome. Oh. Let's look it up. Uh, on February 16, 2010, King announced on his website that his next book would be a collection of four previously unpublished novels. Novelas. Novelas. Novella that called Full Dark, No Stars. In April of that year, King published Black Egg Billy, an original novella issued first by independent small press cemetery dance publications and later released in a mass market paperback by Simon Scotcher. The following month, DC Comics prem premiered American Vampire, a monthly comic book series written by King with short story writer Scott Snyder and illustrated by Raphael Albuquerque who Albuquerque. Albuquerque, who represents King's first original comics work. King wrote, King wrote the background history of the very first American vampire, Skinny Sweet, in the first five issue story arc. <clears throat> Scott Snyder wrote the story of King's next novel, 112263, which I also need to read. I have it over there. It's a very good book. Oh! I'm going to read it. <laughs> and was nominated. <laughs> it's, it's a TV was, show, too. Yeah, well, yeah I, I think I watched the movie. Mm -hmm. was published November 8, 2011, and was nominated for the 2012 World Fantasy Award Best Novel, The Eighth Dark Tower Volume, The Wind Through the Keyhole. I own that. <laughs> was published in 2012. King's next book, next book was Joyland, a novel about an amusement park serial killer, according to an article in the Sunday Times published in on April 8th of 2012. Yeah, I like, I like the theory in the 112263. It's I pretty interesting. That. I kind of wonder how truthful it is. It's about the assassination of JFK and time travel, and it's really cool. Huh? I didn't realize you had it. Now I have to read yeah, it. You have it's hardcover, you know. <laughs> and I have Doctor like... Sleep, which is the second part of The Shining. Hmm. Alright. During his Sh Chancellor Speaker series, Talk of University of Massachusetts, Lowell, on December 7, 2012, King indicated that he was writing a crime novel about a retired policeman being taunted by a murderer with a working with Mr. Mercedes and inspired by a true event about a woman driving her car into McDonald's t restaurant. It was originally meant to be a short story, just a few pages long, in an, in an, in an interview with Parade, published May 26, 2013, King confirmed that the novel was more or less compl completed. He published in June 2013 later, 
on June 20th, 2013 while doing a video chat with fans as part of promoting the upcoming Under the Dome TV series. King mentioned he was halfway through writing the next novel, Revival, which was released November 11th, 2014. Are you okay to read right now? <laughs> I haven't slept at you guys. <laughs> King announced in June of 2014 that Mr. Mercedes is part of the trilogy. The second book, Finders, Keep, was released, Finders Keepers, was released on June 2nd, 2015. On April 22nd, 2015, it was released, revealed that King was working on the third book of the trilogy, which name was later revealed to be End of Watch. During the two which promote End of Watch, King revealed that he had collaborated on a novel set in a woman's prison in West Virginia with his with his son Owen King to be titled Sleeping Beauties, which I haven't read yet. Me either. In 1988, the band Blue Oyster Cult recorded an updated version of its 1974 song Astronomy. The single released for radio play featured a narrative intro spoken by King. That's awesome. Uh, the, Blue, the Blue Oyster Cult song Don't Fear the... Re the Reaper was also used in the King TV series The Stand. That's a really good song. King collaborated with Michael Jackson to create Ghosts in 1996, a 40 minute musical video. King said he was motivated to collaborate as he is always interested by trying anything new. And for him, writing a mu mini musical would be new. So the King of Horror helped the King of Pop. In 2012, King collaborated with musician Shooter Jennings and his band Herophant. I don't know if I said that right. Uh, providing the narration for their album Black Ribbons. So he's like, he's like um, Vincent Price, kind of. Well, Vincent Price was like the movie guy. And he did voiceovers in some people's songs. And then Stephen King is like the book guy. And he does voiceovers in some people's songs. <laughs> King played guitar for the rock band Rock Bottom Reminders. <laughs> Several of whose members are authors. R Reminders. Reminders. Other members include David Barry, Ridney, Ridley. Ridley Pearson, Scott Turo. Amy Tan, James McBride, Mitch Album, Roy Blunt, Blunt wow. Jr., Matt Groening, Kahi, that's Common, Kathy, Kathy Common, <laughs> Cold Mork, Sam Barry, and Greg Lies. King and the other band members collaborated to release an ebook called Hard Listening, the greatest rock band ever. Of authors tells all June 2013. <laughs> King wrote a musical play Ghost Brothers of Darkland County 2012 with musician John Millencamp. King's formula of learning to write well is read and write four to six hours a day. If you cannot find the time for that, you can't expect to become a good writer. He sets out each of his each of each day. Each day with a quote of 2,000 words, with a quota of 2,000 words, and will not stop writing until it is met. He also has a simple definition for a talent in writing. If you write something for, for which someone sent you a check, if you cash the check and, don't, and didn't bounce, and if you then pay the light bill with the money, I consider you talented. <laughs> When asked why he writes, King responds, The answer to that is fairly simple. There is nothing else I was made to do. I was made to write stories, and I love to write stories. That's why I do it. I really can't imagine doing anything else, and I can't imagine not doing what I do. He is also often asked why he writes such terrifying stories, and he answers with another question. Why do you assume I have a choice? King usually begins the story creation process by imagining a what-if scenario, such as, what would happen if a writer is kidnapped by a statistic nurse in Colorado? <laughs> That's how I came up with my book. What if, you know? That's funny. <laughs> and that would be misery, y'all, just in case you didn't know. 
Go ahead. King often uses authors as characters or includes mention of fictional books in his stories. Novelas and novels such as Paul Sheldon, who is in the main character in Misery, Adult Bill Denberg and It, Denver. Denver, <laughs> Ben Mears in Salem's Lot, and Jack Torrance in The Shining. He has extended this to breaking the fourth wall of including himself as a character in the Dark Tower series from Wolves of Scylla onwards. Kala. Kala. Something Kala. In the works of Stephen King for the complete list, in September 2009, it was announced he would ser serve as a writer for Van Gory. Yeah, it was a little weird reading about him writing about himself in the book. That was really weird. <laughs> but you have to read the Dark Tower series in order to understand what happens and why he writes about himself. It's really, really interesting and also really stupidly creepy. Like, no joke, but it's good. It's like it's he's so writing. Good. It's like a third person. It's so good, though. Even his kids are in it. And then Teresa does this. <laughs> I'm going to write a book. King and his wife, Tabitha, own Zone Radio Corps, a radio station group consisting of WZON 620 AM, WKIT FM 100.3, and WZLO 103.1. I want to listen to them on the radio. I bet you could find them. <laughs> Let's see. King tried his hand in directing with Maxim Overdrive, in which he also made a cameo appearance as a man using a malfunctioning ATM. Oh. I love when he does cameos. He's a, he's oh, yeah, a, he's been in like seven of his own movies. Eight. I think it's been seven. <clears throat> King produced and acted in a television series, Kingdom Hospital. Television series. Kingdom Hospital, which is based on the Danish miniseries Rigid by Lars von Trier. That's a really good show. You you should yeah, see it. Oh, it's so good. That's where um, the girl that plays Brie in the Twilight series. What, what the hell is her name? I know her name. It's going to bug me until I remember it. Anyway, she got her start in that. Mary something. 2010, King appeared in a cameo role as a cleaner named Bachman, a reference to his pen name Richard Bachman, on the FX series Sons of Anarchy, which I didn't know, and I've watched all the Sons of Anarchy. I don't know how I didn't pay attention. I've never seen Sons of Anarchy. It's a good show. The sci-fi TV series Haven is based on King's novella The Colorado Kid, and a little bit of The Dome. A little bit. In 2019, King appears in cameo role as a thrift store owner in It Chapter 2, which we haven't watched yet, and I'm super excited to watch. Although, in my opinion, I don't really like Pennywise how it is now. I don't think he's that scary. No, I, I think, think it's kind of funny, not really, like, scary, like... I think a lot of the, uh, the graphics in the new one are good. But I really think that there's no it that's not Tim Curry. No. <laughs> Tim he Curry was, was Tim Car it. Curry was actually scary. But whatever his name is, it plays him now. I can't remember. Scar, 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 Scar. One of them. Not scary. Like. Jodel Furlan plays Mary Jensen. But, like, I just don't think he's scary. I think it's more comical. Yeah. Yeah. And that stupid little giggle he does. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Tim Curry had it right the first time. That deep He laugh. slobbers all over the place. And he's like, oh. that's, that's stupid. Uh, uh, oh. Tim Curry, okay. Tim Curry scared the shit out of me when he played it. Yeah. I think it's Bill Skarsgård that plays. I think so. Uh, Too bad Tim Curry it, didn't no. play again. He had a, he had a stroke. stroke. And he can't yeah. do it anymore. So anyway, Skarsgård doesn't scare me. Like, I'm terrified of clowns, but Skarsgård does not even scare me. I'm just like, fucking idiot. I mean, I'm interested because it's so close to the book. Yeah, there's more stuff in it that was in the book than the first one had, but that's not the point. The point is that Skarsgård couldn't scare a fly. I didn't really get into I didn't really find any information about his eyesight, because his eyesight's going bad, remember? Who? Stephen King. Um... 
Yeah, I think he was supposed to have some kind of surgery. Because he was going blind, I know. Huh. Because I remember as a kid being like, oh no, no more Stephen King books if he goes blind. I'm sure he could tell his wife what to type up. Um, yeah, I was right. Bill's card. And right. then, um, Stephen King didn't like The Shining, like the one with Jack Nicholson. Well, I didn't like it either. Who the hell puts a comedic actress to play in a, a scary... <laughs> what, what's, she what's was good in Popeye. But... Yeah, but what, what's her name again? Um, I don't know. She just reminds me of Olive Oil all the time. <laughs> yeah. So she reminds me of... That was a perfect part for her with Olive yeah, Oil. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Who puts a comedic actress in a scary movie and expects her to do a good job? Well, I mean, Jack Nicholson always plays a good psycho. Well, yeah, Jack Nicholson did an Nicholson awesome crazy. job. But, but the problem was, too, like, I uh, watched, I read the book after I watched the movie, and I was... Shelley Duvall. Very, she went crazy. But I was very Because of that movie. Because, you know, I feel like <laughs> the key points in that book that were very important in the book were not in the movie. And there's another but movie. But that's how it is with most of, yeah. most books that But with Stephen King, though, movies. it's very, like, important to him to have... Well, it's important to us, too. I mean, okay, if you've read The Stand, by the way, read The Stand, and then watch the miniseries, okay? Don't ever watch the miniseries, and then read The Stand, you because always you read will the book miss first. everything. No matter what it is, always read the book first. Always. But if you read The Stand, and then you watch the movie, you realize that they took, like, the first quarter of the book and made the first two of the miniseries. And then they took the last quarter of the book and made the last two of the miniseries. They missed the entire half in the middle. Well, just like, I know, like, like in the sh so many details that they just left out. I know, like in The Shining, like the shrubs move and like. Yeah. In the book, isn't it? He was. I can't remember if it was the book or the movie that he was possessed by the ghost. I honestly don't know. The, when I read The Shining, I was a kid. I don't remember. It's one of them he's possessed by the ghost. The other one, it was a past life. I'm thinking past life was the book, but I can't remember. I honestly don't remember. Uh, like I said, I read it when I was a kid. I don't mm -hmm. remember the book itself. I just remember the stupid movie. But there is another movie that... I haven't watched it yet, of The Shining, but Stephen King approved, approved of. Yeah. I haven't watched it either. But it's I not heard, as popular. I heard that it's but got a lot more detail to it than... You can get it at Walmart, and for sure I want to get it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I want to own every book he's ever written, every movie that was ever made, even if they suck. Mm -hmm. But, by the way, I have both of Carrie's the movies. I don't like the newer one. Okay. Let's get into that. <laughs> <laughs> The first Carrie movie, yeah, okay, they didn't have special effects that were very Don't good. Don't need special effects. But the movie itself was freaking amazing. I mean, Sissy Spacek, nobody else can play that part the way she did. Like, no joke. Um, Chloe Grace Moretz did a really good job of repli reprising the role. But she is too pretty. That's, you know what I mean? Like, she's a good actress, but she's too pretty. Because... In the book, she's described as a homely, plain girl. See, I thought the first Carrie was, she was prettier than the second one. I well, no, I always thought Sissy Spacek was pretty, but the point is that she starts out plain. Oh, yeah. And then becomes pretty. Exactly, you're supposed to be and the shock value of in, her In in the second one, she was just pretty. There was no plain. You can't make Chloe Grace Moretz look plain. She's gorgeous. <laughs> you just can't. <laughs> but in the second one... Everybody else sucked. And, and, I, and I love, um, what was the girl that played the mom? Um, I never remember her name. I always want to call her Jennifer, but I don't think that's it. Damn it. I keep having to look this shit up. <laughs> Julianne Moore. I love Julianne Moore. She is an incredible actress in every other movie I've ever seen her in. But I'm sorry, she fucked that part up in Carrie. I mean, just destroyed she was in the it. First one. No, she was in the second one. She destroyed that part. 
the the woman that did the first one, I don't remember her name either, but the woman that did the first mom, she played a good crazy. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Julianne Moore, I thought, oh, it's going to be Julianne Moore. She's an incredible actress. She blew it. She blew that part so bad. And everybody else, and I mean everybody else besides Chloe Grace Moretz, screwed up the whole movie. Their acting sucked. I don't know who chose all those people, but they sucked. I mean, sucked. The thing I do like about the new It, though, is I like the kids that play it. No, kids. no. I like the new It. I'm just yeah. saying, not him. Not Skarsgård. He just doesn't scare me like Curry did. So. And they're saying, some people are saying Stranger Things is in the same universe as Stephen King's novels. You know, uh, I've and did heard you know that. they all connect? By the way, all of Stephen King's novels are all the same universe, and they all connect. They all mention other novels. If if you're gonna read the Dark Tower series, and I fully recommend that you do because it's freaking amazing, read everything else first <laughs> because there are there are references in the Twilight series or not the Twilight series, the the Dark Tower series. <laughs> shut, up. shut up! Shut up! Shut <laughs> up! In the Dark Tower series that, that, you know, there are references that I didn't understand. So I went and read some of the other books so I could grab on to those references and then went and reread it and it made a hell of a lot more sense. So just read everything else and then read the, the, the Dark Tower series because it's amazing, but you need to understand those references in order to get what's going on Is in the book. Is the Dark Tower one that talks about a crazy clown killing people? I know there's one of them yeah. that talks about Yeah, it's um it. it's an alternate universe in in the Dark Tower series. Like the gunslinger is from one alternate universe where he talks about our universe and then there's another universe. There's like a bunch of different universes. He talks about Denise in it. It's really 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 good read. But I'm telling you read everything else before you read his Dark Tower series because you're going to want to understand the references. <sighs> I had to look them up. <laughs> What's this one from? Because I didn't understand it. Like, I'd never read Salem's Lot. I had to go back and read Salem's Lot and then reread. Because, and there's a lot from Salem's Lot in the Dark Tower series. They reference, he references, like, a bunch of stuff, so. Or Jerusalem's Lot. They're both, there's, they're the same that, one. Doesn't he... He writes books from dreams, right? Was he, were you telling me that? Like, oh yeah, he said he said in his book on writing that he gets a lot of his ideas for books from his nightmares. Can you imagine how scary his nightmares were? I, I'm not sure. Like, I can't even remember half of my nightmares, <laughs> but I know I wake up screaming. I, just, I don't get very many <coughs> nightmares. Or happy dreams, they're mostly nightmares. I don't, yeah, I don't really get a lot of good dreams anymore. No. I've had too many traumatic things happen in my life. <laughs> but then, like, a lot of it, like, the Stand By Me and stuff is based on experiences he's had. Like, The Shining. Because mm -hmm. he literally, a lot of what happened in The Shining, like, the ghost stuff, supposedly actually happened to him. Yeah. Well, um... If you if you were to go through a list of his books, I could probably say that at least half of them are written from either something that happened to him or a dream he had. Like it, that's a nightmare. <laughs> that's a nightmare that he had. He said that clown terrified the hell well, out of him. Well, I heard it was also based <laughs> on um, Gacy. Well, yeah, but John Wayne Gacy. But he has a fear of clowns. scary clowns. Not not. Cool looking clowns, but scary clowns. He, you know, like Gacy. He was. He ended up being a very scary man, who dressed up like a clown. And who that, liked to hurt yeah. children. But that's where he, you know, he had the nightmare after hearing about Gacy, and then started writing about it. Yeah, because he liked to go after children. Gacy liked to go after little boys, mm -hmm. dressed as a clown. Lure them in. Definitely have to do a video about that one. Put them on the after scary week. <laughs> yeah, put them on the list. But I have a big list, you guys. Just so you know, if you like Stephen King, I would read The Stand. 
I would read it if you haven't read it. Deja. Um, <laughs> I would read the Dark Tower series, definitely. But I would definitely read everything before the Dark Tower series. Just to stress that again, because that's important. Um, if you like the movie Green Mile, that I know a lot of that's people. That's my favorite. I know a lot of people have seen the movie but haven't read the book. The book is my favorite. Read the book. It's amazing. That and, Carrie and uh, oh yeah, Tom definitely G Carrie. Jordan Gordon, the girl who loved Tom Gordon, is my favorite. Yeah. Oh, that's a really good one. He talks about how to survive and how she understands how to survive. I think so. Carrie and Tom Gordon are both two very important high school reads. Oh yeah, definitely. Like I think, you know, because Carrie talks about bullying and stuff, and then Tom Gordon's, t you know, teaching a kid how to survive in the woods. Yeah. With Bigfoot. I still think it's Bigfoot. That's I still think it was Bigfoot, too. That's, he talks I about mean, a creature, but never say anything about who it is. You never see what he looks like, but you hear him making noises. And he smells funny, and... And we honestly, uh, I believe, I don't know about you, but I believe he was trying to keep her protected. He was watching He wasn't her. trying to scare her, he was trying to Because he was leaving her food her. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. He scared off wolves, I think, too. Yeah. And, like, she would just see this big place where this big thing was laying, like, because the grass was down and stuff. Mm -hmm. Definitely a good it's book. Bigfoot. It's one of my favorites. They never say what it is, but it was Bigfoot. <laughs> like, true Stephen King fans say, that's Bigfoot. Yep. Especially if they're from the Northwest like we are. Because we're like, oh, wow, that sounds just like Bigfoot. We did a video, by the way, you guys. About Bigfoot, yes. Two, actually, didn't we? Like, it was... It was part order. one and part two, yeah. Like, most of our videos end up being... But I like to make sure I get all the information out. Some people are like, you know, just do the bullet points. But I think everything that I talk about is very important. Well, it's kind of like how we're doing this little talk afterwards. It's like, this is an important subject to us. Mm -hmm. So we're going to cover things that we really enjoy about it, not just the... You know, the stuff that you can get on the internet. Mm -hmm. You know, like our opinions. Like, yeah, our read feelings. everything before you read the Dark Tower series because mm -hmm. of the damn references that you're not going to understand if you don't, you know? Yeah. But, I mean, there's... He, in in some of the other books, he talks about other books. So, mm -hmm. it's not just that one. So, sometimes you read a book and you won't understand the reference. You have to go find the book that the reference came from read it, and then reread that one, because... That are um, towns that he's made up in Maine, Ugh. or in other books. Derry, people thought for a long time that Derry was a real place. It's not. <laughs> it's totally not, but there it's is... based on other towns in Maine. There is a town in, in Maine that um, has a section that they call Derry. And Probably it that's looks where they kinda, filmed it. Yeah, it looks kind of like... Stuff from the book. Literally, they filmed it. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying that's that's why they call that section of town Derry. It's not a real place, but they call it that because that's where most of the I stuff if that's is where at. Where they had the Google search where they had it in the sewers. Remember that they had that picture of the Google search. I heard about that, but I hadn't seen it. It's kind of creepy. Look it up. You want to go see that? I'll have to Apparently see. Apparently, I, I need to see it. it. <laughs> Apparently, I need to see, see it because I, I haven't it. seen it. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, what do you guys want us to film next? Like I said, we've got 31 days. This is just one of 31. Yes, um, yes. Like, this would be the first. Like, subscribe, share my channel. Who's your favorite author? And what books are your favorite? Have a good day. <laughs>